Hi guys, before we start the video, I want to let you know there is a 24 hour link to my Discord in the pinned comment below. We are going to be doing a special game night throughout the month of December. We're going to be playing Town of Salem, Cards Against Humanity, and there's going to be a Christmas quiz. As well as this, if you comment on my Onision Slam poem or my reaction channels are the problem foodie beauty video with the word plush, you'll be entered into my giveaway. If you've already commented, don't worry about it. Commenting on both videos won't give you an extra entry. These will be a little stuffed plush shapes I normally do. You can get a Christmas one if you'd like one to hang up on your tree or a little spooky Halloween one. I can try and make a little plush figure. If you look back in my community post, I have made a zombie cat ride before, but it really depends on how much material I end up getting. So. The, the figure is not a guarantee, but you'll definitely get like a little custom shape that you want Christmas, a Halloween one, or one that just suits your personality. Let's move on to Gabby Hanna. I'm going to be frank, I don't really know much about Gabby Hanna until like the recent situation that's come out. I don't want to call it drama because although it is dramatic, it has some quite serious undertones. The first thing I kind of want to cover that bothered me initially was her take on the herp, because her take on the herp was extremely I inaccurate and stigmatises STDs. STDs should definitely be talked about honestly and openly. People should do everything they can to protect themselves from STDs and to protect other people from gaining any STDs they might have. And it's very important that if you are aware of an STD status, that you inform somebody before you are intimate with them. However, I highly doubt that Gabby Hanna actually knows what the herp is. The way she talks about it is as if it's fatal. She's going on about it's a lifelong disease. Yeah, it is a lifelong disease, and once you've got the herp, you've got the herp. But she's making out like it's some deadly catastrophe that's going to end someone's life. This segment is from the NHS website where it describes how you can transmit and receive the herp. You can also transmit the herp if you have the herp while giving birth and sores are present, you could possibly transmit it to your child as they are exiting the vicinities. However, with this particular STD, you can only transmit it when there are sores present. That's how it works. And normally, when people first get the herp, they will present, i.e. have sores, once in their life, and then it goes away. You still have the herp, but the likelihood of transmitting it is unlikely. I have a couple of people in my life who do in fact have this particular disease, and they have happy, normal, intimate lives with their partners, and their partners do not have the same STD that they have, or any STD for a matter of fact, because the person wasn't presenting and didn't have any sores while they were intimate. There are actually certain medications in which you can take that can prevent the spread of the herp. God, I hate saying it like that, but I have to because YouTube might think, oh my God, what's she talking about? And while I don't recommend having intimate times with somebody who you aren't in a long-term relationship with, if you take this medication, then it, it's fine, even if you're unprotected, though I really don't recommend it especially if it's a one-night stand or someone who you're not going to see again. This is not a hereditary illness. It cannot be passed down to your children. Like I said, the only way that your children could have the same STI as you is if you give birth while presenting with sores or they later on go ahead in life and have intimate times unprotected with someone with the herp. They can't get it genetically from you. In my opinion, Gabby had absolutely no reason to go to Jason and talk about Trisha's supposed health. She could have asked Trisha, even though that's a little bit weird, it's a bit strange. Because honestly, she didn't know whether or not she did have this particular STI or STD, whatever you want to call it. And if that is the case, she didn't know if Trisha was on specific medication or using extra protection for it. 
it's none of Gabby's business, to be fair. It really just adds to the stigma that STDs or STIs are just gained from sleeping around with no regard for anyone else's health. Fact is, you can be born with certain STIs, whether that's hereditary or if it's through exiting the vicinity, as I said, while a mother is presenting with their own symptoms of it. You can have it through not being aware that a partner has the STI or STD, and obviously you can be, um, rooped. It's just so ignorant, and we really don't need any more of the stigma put around these kinds of illnesses and diseases, because then people don't want to go and get help for them. Gabby. Let's move on to the more recent Jessie Smile situation, and full disclosure, I love Jessie. I think the first video I watched of hers was either the side chick story or the one where she said that Sam Pepper tried to fight her. I think she was absolutely charming. I think that she was open, and I like that because a lot of other YouTubers try and sugarcoat things. And yeah, I understand the pressure. I've been trying to censor out words now, but generally, Jessie just didn't give a crap. And that's what I loved. I never had Vine, I never watched Vine, so this was the first time I'd heard of either Jessie or Gabby. And I think the only time I really heard of Gabby, other than just like her name in passing, was when she said that rice gum tried to like, you know, assault her. Before we go even deeper into this certain situation, one thing I did kind of glean from Gabby is that she jumps from friend group to friend group. In the words of her own song, Monster, One after another, they've always come and gone. So what if I'm a monster that's been here all along? They're dropping like flies whenever I'm around. So used to goodbyes, there's comfort in the sound. Maybe I'm the monster that's been here all along. It's clear that she has slight self-awareness, but she more prefers to actually use it as a metaphor and a song to be deep than actually be self-aware. I decided to ask my own best friend about the situation, but put it as in if it were me. As my best friend, would you associate yourself with a group of people that included someone who, mm, me, and hang out with them fully aware that the, mm, could be there? And would you be chatty and friendly with that, mm? She promptly responded, 100% F no. Chronologically speaking, that is strike one of being a terrible person. And with this being brought up again with allegations that she actually supported Curtis Lepore, suddenly, like, you, you can't find any tweets between Gabby and Curtis as if they've dropped off the face of the earth. But you can see the replies to their tweets. Strike two. And then obviously other things have happened we don't know about. Jessie wasn't an angel in the situation. Gabby wasn't an angel in the situation. We don't know what happened there. Jessie has said that nasty stuff was said. She's admitted to that. So neither of these people are completely innocent. But from what we know of Gabby, yikes. Because I don't know the timeline too well, there obviously was, like I've said, the rice gum situation, which I guess is another strike, and then the Trisha situation, first with the herp allegations, and then second with the obnoxiously and constantly messaging Trisha, which I'm fairly sure is, that's, that's got to be like two strikes in one. That's like five. You've, you've had five, Gabby. I'm not sure how how this American game works, baseball works, but I'm fairly sure you should be out by then. And then you decided to slide into an underage fan's DMs and attempt to manipulate her, making absolutely everything about yourself and how you're the poor, poor victim, and completely disregarding the fact she brought up that her pop-pop, her granddad died, and you had absolutely nothing to say about that when it was brought up. That's disgusting. This girl was so serious about what she was saying, she decided to say, I swear on my pop-pop's grave, and he's just died. And... Obviously, she was very serious about that. And what I would read into that is, A, she's serious. B, she's just lost her pop-pop. Did Gabby send any condolences? Did Gabby acknowledge the fact that this girl has just lost a family member and she feels so strongly about this situation that she would swear on their grave? 
No, Gabby completely ignored it and carried on talking about herself. And then when you finished manipulating that girl and she offered to make an apology, you were like, oh, no, it's okay, the damage has already been done. You know, to make this poor girl feel even worse than she already did because you lied to her constantly. I'm going to give you three different strikes in that particular instance. Number one, for trying to manipulate her and make her feel bad. Number two, the pop-pop thing. And number three... Continuing to make her feel bad, like she had caused some terrible damage. And then after that, you slid into several different people's DMs, including drama channels. I don't know, do I give you a strike for each channel? Let's just call it at one, because by God, you have a lot of strikes by now. And guess what, I'm going to give you another for that really crap notepad book thing apology. That was terrible. You got too comfortable sharing information with that fan. Really? You sure you got too comfortable? Because she wasn't trying to get anything out of you. She wasn't trying to make you feel comfortable enough to spill the beans. You just did it. Then you continued on to just plug your music. Like everything was normal. And you were going to follow your dreams in your perfect life. Because you're so kind you're so lovely and you treat everybody with respect and you deserve to follow your dreams totally you just release a really crappy twitter apology and just move on like nothing happened yeah that's that's gonna be another strike and there's so much more stuff that i haven't covered from her past things that she's done in the last perhaps year or so that i haven't covered This has just been in the last few weeks. These YouTubers, pretty much the same. This is like looking into like Becky J. Brown again. She's always the victim, is dear old Becky. She's always left out of friendship groups. She's always alone. But Becky and Gabby are the common denominators in their lives. Gabby, you are the common denominator for everything that happens to you. Yes, sometimes really bad things happen and friendships just naturally just decline over the years. Some things can happen to you. But from what I've seen in just the last few weeks, it's you. It's this strange, self-destructive need to be liked by everybody, but you manage to have it backfire nearly every single time. If you have bad blood with every single friend that you used to have, and it wasn't just a mutual, I don't think we can be friends anymore, I think the problem is you. As usual, all of my links can be found in the description, my Twitter, my PayPal, and the link to the artist who did this artwork, but bow on Twitter. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.